Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Show, where we talk about health tips and strategies to help you be smart, sexy, and strong. On today's show, I have as my guest, Rachel Pontillo. She's the best-selling author of Love Your Skin, Love Yourself, and co-author of the cookbook, The Sauce Code. As a licensed esthetician, award-winning certified health coach, and a metaphysician, Rachel helps women heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually from skin conditions and self-esteem issues. Rachel is a natural skincare formulator and is the founder and instructor of the six-week online course, Create Your Skin Care. She is the president and co-founder of the Nutritional Aesthetics Alliance, a professional organization dedicated to the advancement of skin health link as a new field of practice with innovative resources, practitioner support, and certification. On today's show, we talk about the skin and inner health connection, and Rachel shares some great do-it-yourself skincare tips that you can start doing today in your own kitchen. So please enjoy the show. On today's show, I have as my guest, Rachel Pontillo. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you so much, Dr. Kate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. And I know you're very passionate about skin care, which is great because sure. I'm, I'm very passionate about skin as well. So mm -hmm. let's let's start with your background, though. What, what got you really interested in, in skin and skin care? Well, it really started out of necessity because I'm someone who started getting acne breakouts at a very young age at really 10 years old is when I got my first one. And that progressed all through my teenage years, even into my 20s and my 30s. And um, it was really disappointing because I was expecting it to go away once I was out of my teen years, but that just didn't happen. So I went through that whole cycle of trying all sorts of different products, whether it was drugstore products or um, spa products, dermatology products. I even had injections in my face at one point because I was having such a bad breakout, but nothing worked for the long run. So I had gotten to the point where I accepted that, okay, I'm just someone who's going to have bad skin and let's learn to live with it. So I got this really um, lengthy regimen of skincare products and then my makeup to cover it all up. And I, I'm sure at the time, had I known about the things that I have learned now, I would have done things a lot differently, but I was just going by what was being marketed to me and what I was seeing and what I was hearing from what my friends were doing. So it, with that frame of reference, I was spending just a lot of time in the mirror to cover this up and a lot of money on products that probably were contributing to the problem. And um, it wasn't until I gained weight after having my kids and wanted to make changes in my diet and lifestyle to lose the weight, it wasn't until then that my skin actually cleared up. And that wasn't even my goal. My goal was not even to clear up my skin. It was to lose the baby weight because that was something new for me. The skin, that was old news. That I was used to. But once I realized that the weight was not coming off from just conventional weight loss measures, I did take a significant change to my diet my lifestyle, my mindset. And then I went back to aesthetic school to learn about skin while I was kind of doing all of this. So I was learning about ingredients. I was losing weight. I was kind of having this whole thing happen all, all at once. They were both simultaneous, but very much related journeys that were happening with both the weight and the skin. So long story short, I lost all of the weight, got back to my pre-pregnancy weight and just after a month of switching to a healthier diet, just small dietary changes, my skin was completely cleared up within a month's time. And I was able to stop using the expensive products and start using products that I made myself. And I was somebody who always was interested in making products ever since I was young. My mom used to make concoctions in our kitchen and most of them were not the right thing at the time, but you know, it was still a fun experiment. And as I got older and started to learn more about ingredients, um, first, when I worked in the cosmetics department and the, um, in department stores, I had some exposure there just from product knowledge that I gained. But when I went back to school for aesthetics, that's when my passion for ingredients and how ingredients function on the skin and affect the skin 
that is when my passion really came alive because I really saw how it's important to treat the skin from the outside in with certain spa treatments and it's equally important to treat it from the inside out both with the diet and from the mindset and I feel like when you take those approaches that's where you really get the most sustainable and lasting results yeah and you've touched on so many great points that I I just want to call out a few of those and one of them is that I've heard so I've had so many patients say the same thing that that you've said and this is part of why I got into working a lot with skin is they'd come in to see me for weight loss. You know, they wanted to lose weight um, or they wanted to balance their hormones. They were having PMS or some other health problem, digestive problems, and we changed their diet and then their skin cleared up. And so I, I just, I, you know, I, I love that you mentioned that because I see that and I, for so many years, I didn't really truly recognize it because it was sort of like a, an added benefit, a side effect. But then as I got more people coming in to talk to me about skin, I'm like, well, this is easy. And But people, most people like you were talking about, have this terrible experience of going through the conventional route of putting all these things that suppress these outbreaks on the skin. And it's just covering it up or making it worse. And it's not addressing the underlying problem. So I'm, you know, kudos to you for figuring it out on your own. Thank you. <laughs> um, I wish I would have had somebody like you to help me along the way. It probably would have <laughs> happened a lot sooner, but I'm glad I figured it out on my own so that I could not have to deal with that anymore. Right. And that's why we're doing this podcast too, yeah. so that other people can hear your story, hear us talk about this and, and hopefully catch it before they go down a different route or you know if they're already having discouraging results with the the methods that you're they're using for their skin then they know there's another way so let's Absolutely. let's talk more about that um what have you found are some of the really important things for skin um that you you have found out and in, in doing your aesthetic practice Absolutely. So both in my aesthetic practice as well as in my coaching practice for health coaching I have really identified that the majority of the people that I work with who have inflammatory skin conditions, they all have had high amounts of sugar, gluten, or dairy in their diets. And when we reduce that or eliminate it, eliminating it is the goal, but obviously we don't do that all at once. Um, but when we, when we take those triggers out of the equation – we get significant results and much faster than people are expecting, which is great because if you tell someone, and you may have experienced this in your practice, if you tell someone, oh, you have to eliminate, you know, cheese, candy, and uh, and bread, it's like, ah, it's, it's, it's like the worst thing ever. But then when they start to cut down on it and they see an improvement, it, it really is almost an instant gratification and that makes it worth it and it helps it helps to continue on that path of trying more things that are a little bit unconventional. Some other things for me that really were helpful were the idea of food combining to improve digestion and to increase gut health. We all we know that um, gut health is directly linked to skin health. So the better and more efficient your digestion is, it is going to show in a positive way on the skin. So. Food combining was one thing that worked for me and that I recommend for a lot of my clients as well as um, identifying, seeing about other food triggers that could be present that they might not even know about. Just because somebody hasn't been diagnosed with a food allergy, it doesn't mean that there's not some kind of an underlying sensitivity or intolerance there that can be found out either with diagnostic testing or an elimination diet can be very helpful. But if there's a food trigger there that you're not aware of and you have a persistent skin condition that is not responding to other methods it is quite possible that there is something in your diet that you're not that you don't think is affecting you but it really is and the skin is how that's manifesting mm -hmm. and then um something else just really simple that made all the world for me increasing hydration drinking enough water every day was absolutely key and then um, I do have my warm lemon water every morning and then my green smoothie. My morning ritual is wake up in the morning, immediately drink a glass of room temperature water, a large glass, at least 16 ounces. And then I have a 12 ounce mug of lemon water and then I follow it with a 16 ounce green smoothie. And that is how I start my day every day. And 
those are simple changes that I think anyone can start to incorporate and see an improvement. Yeah. And you've got gorgeous skin now. Thank you. I don't know what you look like before. I want to see some before and after pictures. Do you have any of those? <laughs> oh, I have before and after <laughs> pictures of my weight and those have been published. Those are like, those are all over the internet. Um, but for my skin, I will say, honestly, there are some from when I was a teenager, but after that, I did not really allow myself to be photographed yeah, very much, at least not close up. Right. That was unfortunate. And- and, you know, skincare is not just about vanity, right? It's, I mean, a lot of, it certainly does affect us because with skin conditions, especially with acne, we carry it on our face. We walk around with it. It's hard to hide it up, even with makeup. It means sometimes makeup makes it worse, looks worse. Um, but it, 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 it affects people on a deep level, right? And, Absolutely. and so it's, it's not just about, you know, looking pretty, um, Van, you know, it's not just about vanity because our skin is a great indicator of what's going on inside our body and the health of our body. But also, if we, if we, you know, have to show up in the world with our skin looking bad, then it does something to us internally, right? And as far as like our soul, our spirit, let's talk about that. It, oh my gosh, it affects us on so many levels. If you think about it, your face is one of the first things you see first thing in the morning when you wake up to start your day, and it's possibly the last thing you see before you go to bed. You might say goodnight to a spouse or a significant other or a child, but chances are that face, your face is what you are seeing most of the time during the day. Every time you pass a window, every time you pass a mirror, you catch your reflection. And if you have a skin condition like acne, even if you cover it, every time you see that, it's a constant reminder and in, in, in a lot of cases, it's a constant judgment that you are flawed. There is something wrong with you. People can see that. People are going to think there's something wrong with you. And when these thought patterns start happening in your mind, it really starts to break down whatever self-confidence or self-esteem or self-image that you have. And when you feel so negative about yourself and you feel that there is something wrong with you or that you've been delivered a bad hand of cards and that you're doomed or that you're damaged, it truly affects how you are with relationships, how you are in your job. It might affect you around your own children. It, it, it's just something that even if you, even when you heal the physical skin, I mean, people don't realize it really healing the skin physically is not that difficult. It, it can take time to figure out what the person needs, but once you get the right combination, it does clear up. But the scars that are left in the mind and in the heart and in the soul, those really do stay with us. And they're in the back of our minds when we meet new people. Even today, I mean, I've, I've, got, I've done so much work in healing, my, in healing my spirit, really, and reclaiming my self-confidence that it's gotten better. But even now... If I'm meeting someone for the first time and it's somebody that I respect, I immediately think, okay, how's my face? What are they saying? What are they saying? Do I have something? What are they looking at? Are they looking in my eyes? Are they looking at, you know, can they see that scar here? I mean, it, it, the frantic worrying of how are people seeing me? And are they actually seeing me and hearing me or are they only seeing my appearance It's something that I still deal with, even though it's gotten significantly better. But a lot of the people that I work with, they have confidence issues with relationships, with meeting people, with putting themselves out there. They might set their standards lower because they're afraid that they can only attract a certain type of partner based on their appearance. They might not think that they're pretty enough to attract somebody of a higher level or higher quality. Um... At work, they might be less confident to give presentations or go for a promotion because they're afraid of how they'll be perceived visually. Whether or not it's actually there, that's the question, because a lot of times it's worse in our own minds than it is in reality. And that's something that I really try to help people work through. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so I think it's important for, for people to realize that, that if you're feeling this way, it's not, you're not alone and that right. other people, this is, this is something that, um, other people experience and, but there are solutions for it. There are ways absolutely. to heal that pain and to release that, let go of it and to have healing in a way that you can move forward and have an inner glow that, you know, regardless of your, what your skin looks like, you can still have that glow that comes from your soul, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah, we also know those people that they don't necessarily look physically attractive, but they walk into a room and they just radiate confidence and um, an inner beauty, right? Inner beauty and love. They radiate love. They inspire people with their presence. They command the room. I mean, it, it makes their appearance negligible. It doesn't even matter because who they are and what their purpose in life is, is what's allowed to come out. And that's, I'm, I'm really all about women owning their potential and owning their positions in the world and suppressed by anyone or anything, especially by themselves. So if we can get the skin out of the way and really help to heal whatever's going on inside and help that person gain more confidence and take more ownership of who they are. And Hey, I'm on this planet for a reason. It just, it, it it's life changing. And if that, if skin is the way we can get to that, if we, if we can get to that goal by healing the skin, let's do it. Right. And it's really about taking back our power and 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 so when you you mentioned that when you were younger you you really felt powerless right when you had all these people telling you this is what you need to be doing oh and don't worry your skin will clear up in a few years but it didn't and you felt really helpless um so this is about so it's like you do a lot of work with helping people get empowered with the tools that that they need and one of those things is the the do it yourself mm-hmm. in your kitchen you know stop spending so much money on um uh, you know, products that you buy in the department stores and online and skin, really expensive skincare products. I mean, yeah. some of them are thousands of dollars. It's ridiculous the it's amount insane. of money that people are spending on skincare products. So um, I really want, I'm really curious. I know my audience is really curious to know some, some things that we could do to start doing some do-it-yourself facials and things like that. So what can you share with us today? Well, there's a couple of different categories of DIY skincare. There's this DIY skincare that you might think of when you look in your refrigerator and see what you have and whip something up in a blender and put it on as a mask. And that's a wonderful thing to do. That's something that I encourage. But um, there are drawbacks to that because you can't necessarily store a product like that for very long. It will start to lose its benefits. And anything that contains plant matter or food, anything like that, it will deteriorate and perish, which can grow microorganisms. And obviously, we don't want to be putting any of that on our faces. Not the bad Um, kind, anyway. (laughs) No, no. Probiotics, that's a different story. Yeah. But... um, there is another realm of DIY skincare, which I really do, where I'm I'm all about using ingredients that regular skincare formulators use and ordering them and making them in my kitchen using all natural plant-based ingredients, um, healthy fats like plant oils, waxes like beeswax, butters like shea butter, mango butter. Herbs, I use a lot of herbs and teas. I make infusions. I make glycerites, extracts. My, I make them myself. Um, and then also essential oils are wonderful. Hydrosols, aloe vera gel. These are things that a lot of them are accessible in health food stores, but if not, you can get them very simply online. And you just start experimenting. I started wanting to make creams and lotions, which is one of the more challenging things to make because there's a lot of functional ingredients that have to go into a product like that to keep it together and to preserve it properly, but still naturally. But you don't have to even do all that. You can be really successful just with making simple water-based products. Like a simple, a simple cleanser could just be aloe vera gel with Castile soap and herbal tea. And there you have a cleanser. And you might, you would want to put a little alcohol in there. I would recommend if you have like 80 proof vodka or brandy, put about 15 to 20% in there to preserve that. Um, but that will give you a couple months shelf life that you can use yourself. And it literally takes less than a couple of minutes to throw that together. And you don't have to be as precise with your measurements. Or 
you can make something more complicated where you're working more with percentages rather than rather than measurements. Um, and you are using ingredients like emulsifiers and binders and thickeners and stuff like that. And all of these types of ingredients can be found from natural sources. They're not all chemicals, but it's really up to you to decide what, how, how, how natural you want to be, whether you want to do your kitchen products or if you want to do something that is more aligned with what you would find in a natural or organic spa. Any of it is completely doable. If I could do it, anybody could do it. I didn't have, I didn't come from a, a chemistry background or anything like that. I learned as I went, I did trial and error. And then I went and got some continuing education in different topics here and there. But the products I make now are equivalent to anything that you would see at a high end organic spa. But I also have no problem just going into my kitchen. I like to, uh, I call it a skin smoothie. And you just whip up a green smoothie with antioxidant rich, rich fresh fruits and vegetables. You might put some flaxseed oil in there or another edible oil that would be appropriate for your skin type. And then I will mix that a little bit of that smoothie in with some clay. You can get green clay, um, white kaolin clay. You can get just powdered. Just mix it together with your smoothie and put it on your face mm -hmm. as a skin smoothie mask and then drink the rest of your smoothie so that you're getting the inside out and outside in benefit from that. And it's fun. I do it with my kids all the time and they, they think it's a riot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my I've been doing that with my kids too, and they they do love it. My awesome. well, my girls do. My son just walks away. <laughs> but <laughs> well, um, he's a boy. He's sixteen but also. But the reason, I, oh, yeah, sorry. I was just gonna say that. And the smoothie that you make, what's the base of that? I use a couple of different bases. I do use just water a lot. Sometimes I'll do herbal teas. I'm also really big into fermentation. I ferment a lot of my own foods naturally. So I, if I have kefir. Or if I have kombucha, I'll use that as a base. I typically am a non-dairy person. As I mentioned earlier, I have acne and dairy is a common trigger, especially, you know, for me. I found that the hard way. Um, so I'll make an almond milk kefir, which is a, for, it's like a drinkable yogurt kind of. It has probiotic strains in it. Or you could just use plain almond milk or coconut milk. Um, but I have no problem using herbal teas or just water. And then I just add my greens and then I add my fruits and NutriBullet it up and we're good to go. And what kind of greens and what kind of fruit do you usually use? I like to change it up based on whatever I have in my refrigerator. But some foods that some ones that I, I like in particular for the skin, I love using spinach because spinach not only has your antioxidants, but it also has omega-3 fatty acids in it, which a lot of people wouldn't think because it's spinach. You wouldn't think that there would be healthy fat in spinach, but there is. Um, and then kale. I mean, who doesn't love kale in a smoothie? It's fabulous. It's one of the most nutrient dense foods that we have. Collard greens also are great for people who don't tolerate raw kale. Not everybody does, depending on health. Um, so kale, collards, um, spinach, dandelion greens. This time of year in the summer, I love. They are so good for adding a little bit of a tartness, bitterness to the smoothie which complements the sweeter fruits nicely. And it also helps to increase your digestion. Um, and then with fruits, I, I personally like a little bit more of a tart smoothie. So I like to add stuff like berries. Um, Granny Smith apples are a favorite of mine. And then I like to put an avocado in there for the healthy fats and the protein. Protein is so important for healthy skin because the skin is comprised primarily of protein. So you want to make sure that you're building those healthy skin cells from the inside out with the healthy fats, with hydration, and with the proteins. And your plant proteins for the skin, I think, are some of the most effective. And then some add-ons that you can put in um, but more along those lines. Chia seeds are great, as well as flax seeds. And they also help with kind of a um, – they, they help to build up the texture a little bit because they gel. So if you want to even use that as a mask without the clay, you can do that. And then it makes a little bit of a thicker smoothie as well. Yeah, the chia seeds for people that aren't familiar with those, they do. And you said put them in water; they are they just yes. turn kind of jelly like, and um, so they thicken up a smoothie quite nicely. But good thing to know if you're putting in, you don't need a lot of them, and right. you know, it thickens up the smoothie quite quickly, especially if it sits for a while. <laughs> yeah, and if you're using something like avocado, you probably wouldn't want to add chia to that. Right. 
will thicken up the smoothie on its own. And if you are using um, not a Nutribullet, if you're using a blender where you're adding ingredients one at a time, you will want to do the avocado last because if you do it too soon, it will actually stiffen up similar to how meringue would and you might not be able to get the texture that you want without adding more water. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something I also found out the hard way. <laughs> Yeah. And I, and I am actually getting hungry just thinking about the avocado and smoothie. I love avocados and smoothies. And I think a lot of people don't think that avocados would be good in smoothie because they think of, you know, smoothies as being sweet. So why would you put, a, but it's that creamy texture that's created. Yes. It's almost like putting yogurt or something like that into it. Um, exactly. So it, it doesn't even taste like avocado anymore because you've got the berries and other things in there. So right. love that. And I love the idea of putting it just using some of that, whatever's left over, putting on your face, mixing it with the clay. Now, clay you have to be somewhat careful with, right? And making sure you get a, a pure source, a clean source of clay, correct? Absolutely. You don't want to be just getting it from somebody who happens to have clay in their backyard. That's that's not what we're doing. You would definitely want to order from a reputable supplier. Um a supplier that really values organic and wild, naturally wild crafted products. And um, you would want to read all the information and make sure that it's been cleaned and purified and all of that before you would use it. And I always recommend keeping it in its powdered form because clay is something that needs a high amount of preservation if you are mixing it with water. So you want to keep that separate and powdered until you are ready to use it. Right. And I know that the, the the purity is important, but also some people will actually, some companies will actually irradiate the clay, which we don't want right. that either. So right. just, we just need to go with companies that we, you know, that, that we trust and that we've done a little background checking on and, and just ask questions, right? Excuse Absolutely. Me. That's, that's the thing that a lot of people get worried about is that they're, they're afraid that with a big company, if they have a question about the source of a product or the treatment of a product, that they won't get answered. That is not the case. Any company that is a reputable cosmetic supplier should be happy to provide purity reports, certificates of analysis, organic certification. Um, there was one ingredient that I had a question on whether it was from a GMO source or not, and I was able to obtain a certification of non-GMO status from that company. Always ask questions, pick up the phone, email their customer service. They want you as a customer, so they will be, they, they should answer your questions and they should do it rather quickly. And if they don't go with a different supplier. Right. For sure. And I think people are particularly on it these days because of social media sharing. Oh yeah. <laughs> you get one bad, um, you know, complaint about uh, customer service and it gets spread pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I've never had a problem getting information quickly about the purity or quality of an ingredient. Anytime I've asked from the suppliers that I use. Great. Let's let's talk about tea a little bit. You mentioned mm. that tea can be a great um, ingredient in do-it-yourself recipes. Yeah. How do you how do you recommend using that other than in the in your smoothie? And I by the way, I've never put tea in my smoothie before. I have to start trying that. I love Try that. Try it. Yeah, green tea or herbal tea. I mean, even black tea or white tea, oolong tea. They're all beneficial. Um, tea. From the Camellia sinensis plant, that would be your white tea, green tea, oolong tea, black tea, yeah. Those all come from the same plant. It's white tea or black tea. That depends on the level of fermentation of the leaves and also at what stage of growth they harvest the leaves. So each stage has different benefits. One is not necessarily better than the other. They're just different. So you're going to get more antioxidants. Um, well, you're going to get antioxidants with any tea. They're all very high in antioxidants as well as tannins. Tannins are not necessarily something that people want to consume internally because it can be acidic. However, tannins are very antibacterial and beneficial to use in a topical skincare product, especially if you have a skin condition like acne where there's bacteria, harmful bacteria present. But what's really interesting about tea is that all of the teas from that specific plant have been known to help not only prevent sun damage, but also can help repair sun damage. So I do not ever recommend using a non-FDA approved sunscreen ingredient as a standalone sunscreen. I, I can't responsibly make that recommendation because the SPF levels are just too variable to be able to measure. So if you, what I recommend if you want to incorporate tea into your sun care regimen 
is to make a serum or a toner or a moisturizer containing an extract or infusion of that tea and then apply it underneath your natural sunscreen. And that can help to enhance your level of sun protection. And then it's great for after sun care as well. And if you're someone who has sun damaged skin or premature aging from days in the sun when you were a teenager without sunscreen, it's something that can also be used in a product to help counteract that damage as well. Great. So, so these types of tea, so white, green, black white, tea. White, green, oolong, and black. And I would definitely recommend getting them from an organic supplier and getting them loose leaf. Do not get the tea bags because those tea bags often, when they're powdered so finely that they oxidize and lose a lot of their benefits. So you want the whole leaf. And then you can make an infusion, which is basically making a cup of tea, let it cool down to room temperature, filter it out. And you can use that in place of water in a lot of ingredients. You can use it as a toner. You can use it in a moisturizer, a serum, anything like that. You can also, as we mentioned, use it as a base for your smoothie. And then herbal teas, any tea that, any herb that is known to have particularly anti-inflammatory properties like lavender or chamomile, calendula, those are fantastic as skincare ingredients, both internally and externally. And then any, um, any herb that is known for its detoxifying or drawing properties can also be used to help detoxify the skin because the skin is a detoxifying organ just as much as any other detoxifying organ in the body, the colon, the kidneys, the lungs, the liver, the skin is equally as important. And when it is allowed to do that function, it puts a lot less tax on the internal organs that are also responsible for that function. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to mention things like wearing makeup when you work out, not a good idea. No bueno. Don't do it. Because <laughs> you're sweating, your body's trying to excrete toxins during that time. It's a great time to detox is when you're exercising or in a sauna or it's hot outside you know, you're sweating, but if you've got it covered up with makeup, right, it's just blocking that, that beautiful organ that our largest organ of the body that's, that can help with detoxification. Yeah. Right. Great. What are, um, so before we end, what are some, some major big tips that you would say some big takeaways you want people to have things that they can start doing today? Okay. I would say, like I mentioned earlier, make sure you're drinking enough water every day. Dehydration is the number one cause of pretty much any issue you might be having going on in your life, whether it's low energy, headaches, just remember that we are mostly water. We're what, 70 to 80% water, our bodies. If we don't have enough water constantly replenishing all of our organs, none of them are going to work properly. The skin is the last to get nourishment and hydration from what we take in internally, whether it's food or water. So oftentimes we only, our skin only gets about 10% of what we put into our bodies because everything goes to first nourish the internal vital organs and to hydrate the internal vital organs. So that by the time it gets to the skin, it's like eh, only a little bit's left. So if we're not drinking enough water, then our skin is going to be the first organ to experience that dehydration. And dehydrated skin is just not performing any of its functions properly. It's not doing its job in um, excreting toxins, as we said, in secreting the proper amounts of oil to help its barrier function stay strong so that it can protect us. And also dehydrated skin is more likely to be susceptible to inflammation, to infection if there is infection present or bacteria present. And also um, it's going to look more aged. It's going to look lackluster. Hydrated skin is vibrant. It's glowing. It's plump. It's pink. It's fresh. It always, it will make any skin condition look better, even if it's the first thing you concentrate on. So I highly recommend making sure that you drink enough water. And my, the hydration formula that I typically recommend is taking your weight, dividing it in half and drinking that number in ounces per day of water. So for example, if you're 150 pounds, you would want to drink 75 ounces a day of water. And of course, if you're exercising or if it's really hot out, you'll want to make sure you're drinking more because you'll be sweating more. And when you're sweating, you want to make sure you're replenishing what you lose with that water. And on that same token, since 
our skin does get such a small amount of the water that we take in internally, it is important to hydrate from the outside in. So I recommend making sure that your, in, your skincare products have ingredients that are humectant, which means that they are attracting water from the environment and locking them into your skin cells, as well as emollient, which means that they are lying on the surface to help seal in that moisture and prevent it from evaporating from the skin. That way you're bringing the hydration inside and you're also bringing it on the outside and sealing it in. And that is going to be the best results. So some common ingredients that you might want to look for that are humectant would be aloe vera gel. That's probably the most common natural one. It is tolerated pretty well by most people. Easy to find. Um, make sure that it is pure aloe vera gel that you're getting, not one of those after sun products that have other ingredients. You want to read your labels. That's probably the most common humectant. Honey is also a beautiful humectant. Um, it makes a great standalone cleanser or mask, but if you are adding it to a product, keep in mind that you will need to add a preservative for sure. Same with the aloe, because the sugars in the honey will feed microbes. And even though honey on its own is antibacterial and antiviral and antifungal, when you add it to something else, it's like giving candy to the kids. So you want to um, be mindful of that. And then on the emollient side, and these are the ingredients that lie on the surface of the skin and keep that moisture in and also protect and nourish the skin, I would recommend your plant-based oils or butters like a shea butter, jojoba oil is beautiful, argan oil, rosehip seed oil. These are all rich, rich with antioxidants and they will not clog the pores, which is important if you're someone who has acneic skin or oily skin. They can actually help to regulate the production of oil in your glands, in your oil glands, so that if you wake up with an oil slick and then find yourself dehydrated, it, a product like this, when used appropriately, can help to kind of ease those extremes and uh, keep an even oil production throughout the day. And they are great emollients. Right. And I think a lot of people do think when they have acne prone skin that they're trying to dry it out. I think that's right. a, a tendency for people to think, oh, I can't put oil on my skin because I break out. And, and yeah. it's a matter of the right kinds of oils, the oils that you mentioned that will help with that. Do you also, um, how do you feel about avocado oil? Do you think that's not for thing? acne? So for coconut acne. oil and avocado oil are not great for people with acneic mm -hmm. skin. You can certainly use whole avocado in a smoothie and that would be okay. But the mm -hmm. oil, once it's extracted, it actually can be really pore clogging. So if you have a drier skin type or if you have irritation, like eczema or rosacea and you don't have acne accompanying that, the avocado oil might be something that's really beneficial for you. But if you are someone who tends to get clogged pores, congested skin, or acne, you would want to avoid the avocado oil topically. And what about coconut oil? Coconut oil Same is so thing. popular. Yeah. Okay. Coconut oil is a tricky one because it's so nutritious when you take it internally. And I know that it, it can be great for some skin types. But again, it, it can clog the pores and cause congestion and perpetuate acne. And it can also be very drying for people who already have dry skin. So there's a very narrow window of skin types that actually can benefit from coconut oil. And it's tough because it looks like a great ingredient for acne on paper because you read about how it's antibacterial and antifungal and mm -hmm. all these great things. And you're thinking, okay, well, acne is bacteria, so I should put that on. But the chemical structure of it just does not make it work very well with that skin type. And certainly, while oil is not a cause of acne, it's not, it's, it, it could contribute to it if you have too much of it. But mm -hmm. drying out the skin is not what you want to do and clogging it even more with a, with a uh, comedogenic ingredient like coconut oil or avocado oil or even olive oil, mm -hmm. you would want to avoid that topically. Yeah. Okay. We're great tips. Really great information. Thank you, Rachel. How My can pleasure. people learn more about you? And also if there are people, um, estheticians out there or other skincare specialists that want to learn more about how they can, they can learn more about what you're doing. Tell us about all of that. Yeah. So I've got, I've got, 
a good amount of ways for people to reach me and to learn more and to get involved. I have my website, and this is also the home of my blog and my coaching practice, which is holisticallyhope.com. I also have a best-selling skincare book called Love Your Skin, Love Yourself, which I call kind of a skincare self-help book, and it's also a little bit more of my story in, in detail that's available on Amazon and Kindle. And then I also have an online course called Create Your Skincare. It's a six-week online course where I teach you to design customized all-natural products specifically for your skin that we run three times a year live. And then I have a new organization called the Nutritional Aesthetics Alliance, which I founded with three partners. And we are focusing on bringing the aesthetics field, the skincare field, together with the nutrition field because... As we've talked about earlier, the best benefit is when you combine the nutrition with the proper skin care and also with the right mindset. That's where the sweet spot is. So this new organization is for estheticians as well as health coaches, licensed nutrition professionals who want to learn more about this connection, about we're calling it the skin health link, what we can do to really teach our clients how they can incorporate these different practices, whether it's in the treatment room in a spot or whether it's in a nutritional consultation. We're giving practitioners as well as their clients usable, relevant, targeted resources that they can use to support their skin, both nutritionally and also from the outside with the spa treatments and home care regimen. Great. And that's at nutritionalaesthetics.com. Great. And we'll also have all those links up on my website as, as well under your podcast interview. So Excellent. thank you again, Rachel, for all your great information. It was great thank having you. you on the show. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Rachel Pontillo. To learn more about Rachel, you can visit my website, drtrevorcates.com. Go to the podcast page with her interview, and you'll see all the information and links there. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the Spa Doctor podcast on my website or on iTunes so you don't miss any of our upcoming shows. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.